I'm at a lemur preserve. And no, I'm not in Madagascar. I'm in Florida. Well, it starts with Dr. Ian Tattersall, who is a paleoanthropologist and lemur expert at the American Museum of Natural History, where we both worked. And he said, my God, these lemurs aren't going to make it into the next century. And uh, it was very devastating. He explained all the reasons why. I knew lemurs. I'd been to Madagascar, but, you know, um, I didn't know that the situation was as dire as it was, and that was 20 years ago. I said, Ian, I just got a little inheritance. Why don't we try to do something about this? And we did. The first thing that, that we had to do was uh, go to Duke Primate Center and make sure that they would give us the lemurs if we actually built the place. And they said that they would, only because of Ian. And one thing led to another. So where do we put a lemur reserve? My folks lived in Florida. I called the Department of Agriculture and said, where's the frost line? And they said it's about an hour and a half south of Tampa. So that's where I pinned it. And finally found this piece of really beautiful land. And I got some kids here in Mayaka City to put it together, put, a, to put the deck together. We put it on the deck and I started entertaining prospective donors. My name is Dr. Eric Patel. I'm the Conservation Program Director for Lemur Conservation Foundation. I'm a primatologist by training. I finished my PhD in 2011 um, at Cornell University where I focused on one of the rainforest living safakas in northeastern Madagascar. Since that time, I've gotten more involved in conservation programming and development work in villages as we try to develop solutions to the lemur extinction crisis. Um, with LCF, we're trying to connect um, what we do here in Mayaka better to Madagascar. And our goal is not only to save and to rear and to breed the lemurs that we have here, but also to support local communities in Madagascar. In particular, Anjanahari Besud National Park is one of our focus programs um, in Madagascar. The facility here in Mayaka City is remarkable. These animals have two very large forests where they free range. That's unusual. You'll be hard pressed to find uh, more than one or two facilities worldwide where the animals have this much space to roam and they actually engage in extremely naturalistic behavior.
Recently, a number of scientists, myself included, um, put forth a publication called the Lemur Action Plan. And in there, we outlined three major things which we think can help save lemurs in the wild. Um, of course, captive breeding is, is critical, and that's why we're doing everything we're doing here. But additionally, we think ecotourism um, can help Madagascar a lot. Lemurs aren't that hard to see in the wild, much easier than many other primates worldwide, and the forests in Madagascar are pretty safe. There's no poisonous snakes, and there's no big, um, no large mammals per se, no lions, tigers, elephants, hippos. Also, we think that supporting local community guide associations is critical to saving wild lemurs. These are small associations of local people that are invested in protecting their local wildlife and they earn money by doing that. Thirdly, we think that the long-term research centers in Madagascar um, are, are having a lot of success in saving national parks and saving wild lemurs. Why is your organization different from other types of zoos or conservation groups? The main difference is that we have a very specific species focus. So we're 100% dedicated and committed to lemurs in particular. So um, unlike a zoo that has a variety of different animals and they have a lot of different conservation focuses, um, we focus specifically on lemurs. And so we can provide a large amount of space um, for lemurs and we can prioritize conservation programs that are dedicated specifically to them. We want to save lemurs from extinction. They are on a very bad path. They are the most critically endangered primates on the planet. In fact, they're the most critically endangered family of mammals on the planet. The uh, mongoose lemurs and the red ruff lemurs are both critically endangered. So that's the last stop before um, extinct in the wild. So we are focusing our efforts heavily on breeding those two populations because they are so vulnerable in the wild. There's, you know, over a hundred different kinds of lemurs, and so you see all different types of social structures, um, but a lot of them have these very, very close-knit communities, and, and I think that is also part of the attraction to lemurs, is you see them and you see this family dynamic um, that's similar to, you know, what we see in people, and we can relate to that. We can relate to the, the mom and the dad and the children and the play behavior, um, and the maternal behavior, all of that we see um, is similar to, to what we see in ourselves. 